Hey, my dudes, uh, you know, it's not always easy to talk about your uh, failures, the things that you wish maybe you had done a little differently. And I'm not one to live in regrets. But I will say uh, that I've made some, well, let's just say that I've made some pretty big mistakes, some grave errors, if you will. And early in my career, I lost everything. Like I was broker than broke. I had to move back in with my parents. I was selling comic books out of the trunk of my car for gas money, okay? Man, I was I was in the pits, uh, one might say. If there is a definition of the word pits, I was in it. I didn't have to be, but I made a lot of bad decisions and I could have been avoided. And maybe, maybe uh, this is something that you could learn from my mistake and possibly set yourself up for uh, not so many mistakes because one big mistake like that, and it cripples you. I mean, you gotta take opportunities that you didn't wanna take. You might find yourself taking jobs that uh, are way not in, in line with where you wanna go. It can derail your whole goal. And you know, this channel is all about you achieving your art goals. So of course I would, you know, wanna pass along my own experiences uh, that maybe you can, you know, gleam a few things from and uh, possibly avoid some pitfalls. I close your eyes and let me take you back to 1993. Oh yeah, okay, Pearl Jam was number one. I think maybe Nirvana also. Well, no, Nirvana beat out Pearl Jam. Anyway, it was all about big pants and graffiti and skateboarding. And uh, back then it was, uh, you didn't even have 3D video games. And long before there was a band by the same name or a uh, Stallone movie by the same name, there was an indie comic book called Creed. And yeah, that was my baby. I created that. I created Creed in 1993. That's right, the very same uh, Creed that I just recently released two full 60 page issues for. And, but I had started this originally when I was 17 years old and man, it was uh, quite a success for a 17 year old kid to be cashing checks that were, uh, well, let's just say that when I took a check into the bank, they didn't think it was real because uh, what kid has that kind of money? So it's not like I was a millionaire or anything like that, but man, for a 17 year old kid living in the Midwest, uh, that was good money and in fact, uh, I, I really had a good time with it. <laughs> I bought all the Snapple you could drink. Uh, no joke, man. I bought all the toys I never got as a kid and I just went nuts. I, uh, I remember going to comic book conventions and just buying up all the GI Joes that I never got as a kid. And now I look back and think, wow, um, maybe I could have made better choices with that money. <laughs> I started buying my friends Nintendos. And in fact, I started hiring my friends. In some cases, I would even overpay artists to do jobs for me. So like I'd hire an inker or something and I'd pay them twice what they were getting paid somewhere else just so I could make them feel like special. And, and in some ways that's that's good as an employer. It's like you want your, your team to feel appreciated, but I didn't actually have the money to do that. <laughs> I just wanted to be a big shot. And I wanted to, I think to some extent, I didn't feel that I deserved the success I had. Maybe there was a little bit of guilt there because I would just spread the wealth, you know? I would like share it with the people around me. Well, if you're buying things all the time and you're not really, you know, paying attention to what money is going out and what money is coming in, uh, well, you might think, well, that lasts forever, you know? And that was, I think, the mindset that I had. I just thought, well, uh, my comic book is great and people really love my ideas and my stories, so I must be great at this. I might be able to just do this forever. It's just gonna get better from here, right? Right? Because a good thing has to last forever. <laughs> of course, history has told us that many times over. But alas, in the late 90s, the comic book market completely collapsed and it got to a point where even Spider-Man was selling like less than 60,000 copies. So you can imagine my little indie Creed comic was barely clearing, I think, a thousand or 1500 copies. And that's at retail. So after the money was kind of gone and I, I no longer really had any investments, obviously I didn't buy any, any investments at all. And uh, so when the money was gone, I kind of had to take jobs and I would take jobs drawing other people's comics. I drew a couple of issues of a uh, spinoff from Scud the Disposable Assassin for my friend Rob Schraub at the time. Uh, I drew some covers for various other comic books. And uh, when I would go to conventions, you know, I would I would make a few bucks, you know, enough to, to cover maybe that month's, you know, rent or whatever. But for the most part, I had to move back in with my parents at one point. And that was a real brutal blow to my ego. But there were incredible lessons learned from this experience. In fact, I would say that because it was so traumatizing or because it really, uh, well, one, I was embarrassed about it, but because it had such an impact on my life, and I, that, so much so that I had to move back in with my parents, that actually solidified the lesson in my mind to just always save for the winter and never assume 
that a great situation is just gonna carry on forever. And in fact, if, that, if there's one thing that you could learn from me uh, in this video, it would be that. No matter what industry it is, no matter what it is that you might have that's going really well, at some point that, that will shift or change. So be prepared for change, especially in the entertainment industry, because entertainment is always changing and evolving and the customers' wants and needs are always changing. The consumers of art and entertainment and comics and video games, it's always changing and shifting. So you kind of have to always be on your toes. And that's a good thing. It's not something to be scared of. It's something to prepare for so that you're always ready. My backup plans have backup plans, man. I will never fall uh, because of my failure with money at a young age. I'm grateful for that struggle. And even that mindset in and of itself can be a value to you if you've failed at something and you learned a valuable lesson from it, you should not resent it or regret it. It should be something that you look at and be thankful for because now you have that understanding and now you can be more prepared to face a similar challenge in the future. You can't be bitter or resentful if you're happy with where your life is and you're filled with gratitude every day, even if it's gratitude for challenges. So this was a very valuable lesson for me to learn at a young age because later on in my life, when faced with things like big layoffs at companies that I've worked at, well, I was prepared for those layoffs. I remember when I finally got a job at one of my dream studios where I wanted to work, I'd been working there for a long time and when they needed to cut budgets, they let a bunch of people go. And if I had been living paycheck to paycheck or if I were just barely scraping by and had not prepared for that, well then I would have been really screwed. I would have had to move halfway across the country and move back in with my parents at a much older age. In fact, I was getting a severance pay every month and a lot of other people that were laid off with that group, uh, they were like, well, I'm just taking a vacation. But not me, man, I went right to work doing contract work. In fact, that's when I started my Aquatic Moon art house, uh, where we were just doing uh, contract gigs for a different company. And that was the start of a whole new chapter in my life. And I was able to take that opportunity because over those years that I had been working for that company, I was socking extra cash away. I was keeping my storytelling skills strong. I was still doing lots of studies. I was preparing for other paths that might pop up. Whether or not they did, I didn't know, but at least I would be prepared for them in the event that they did. And you can't be a freelancer or a contractor. You can't run a contract art house if you have no concept of budgeting for the future winters, you know? And I'm talking about like periods of time where there's just no money coming in. You can't do that if you're living paycheck to paycheck because sometimes clients are just like, well, we only need you for a month or they book you for a year, but then they only needed you for two months of that year. So then they end the contract and it's like, well, then you've got to pivot and you've got all these expenses. And if you're living, if you don't have the cash stored away for those winters, then you're not going to make it. So that lesson from when I was a teenager doing my comic book and, and failing, uh, without that lesson, I wouldn't be able to do what I do. And in fact, it's set in motion a kind of a mindset to have multiple streams of income from multiple different sources, from various investments, uh, to publishing uh, books, to publishing tutorials, to building YouTube as a side gig. I don't know if you guys know this, this is like one tenth of my week is YouTube. And not just that, but I live frugally, man. You guys who are my subscribers already know this because I've done a few videos about how to cut costs as an artist. I, I live as if I make about 25% of what I actually make. So living way under your means means that you've always got this big uh, safety net uh, in your coffers. And so all of that might make a lot of sense to you guys who've seen me make videos about this before where I've said never take a huge risk. Uh, I don't like to take big risks, and I don't think you should either. <laughs> when I said I have my backup plans have backup plans, I meant it, brother. I got a lot of things going on at all times, some of which haven't made money yet, and I've been working on them for two years. Some would say I'm neurotic, but I'd like to say I'm a survivor because I'd gone through so many harsh winters, and I'm grateful for every one of them. <laughs> I am. I am. I'm actually grateful for all of those challenges because I've just gotten stronger, and I'm unstoppable now at this point. Anyway, that's the way that I see those challenges that I faced in my life. I'm grateful for all of them because they've made me stronger. They've made me more capable. And if you were to apply this to yourself and your own experiences, you might, you might ask yourself if there was something you went through that was really challenging for yourself that you learned something really valuable from. And sometimes it's only in hindsight that we can really see it, that we can really uh, perceive 
that man, that was a really great thing. That thing that other people would have said was a tragedy ended up being the best thing for me, whether it was a breakup or whether it was getting laid off from a job or whether it was, you know, losing all of your money that you made from your indie comic when you were a kid, <laughs> whatever it is. Uh, I try to see the benefit and the positive in every situation, and that's worked out pretty good for me. You know, I don't wanna tell you you should adopt that or anything, but I'll tell you what, it's been one of the cornerstones of my success anyway. If you see me as successful, that's one of the reasons. In fact, I would venture to say it is the biggest reason, and uh, in times of darkness, it's really hard to see the benefit of what you're going through. But uh, if you can shift your mindset to find what is beneficial about the situation, even going without something so that you can appreciate something that you didn't really appreciate before. That can sometimes be just the most valuable lesson. So anyway, that's it for me on this week's video. I wanna thank you all for stopping by. If you'd like to find out more about Creed, I have signed issues available in the link below, as well as Twilight Monk books that are signed with sketch editions. That's right, I've got an eBay store now. And uh, if you'd like to learn about how to make your own comic book, well, I have a whole workshop about that. It's called Making Comics from Start to Finish. And you, by the end of that workshop, you'll be able to get a printed copy of your comic that you can give away to your friends, sell online, or just give away. Of course, I'm here to help you achieve all of your art dreams. So if you have any questions, please drop those in the comments below and I'll see you guys next week. All right, ciao, baby, oh yeah.